Hi, I'm Andrew with Infinity Cutting Tools. Today, I'm working on the base for our slab table project. If you missed parts one and two of this project, I went through the entire process of flattening our slab using a router and a homemade planing sled and also showed how I sand the live edge, sand the surface, and finish the slab so that it's ready to be our table top. I've got a piece of eight quarter walnut that I've taken the time to lay out my table design, make sure I get all the pieces out of my piece of wood, and I simply cut them down where I could to give me smaller pieces to work with. If you notice, I, called, I said that this is eight quarter walnut. If you're not familiar with that term, it's actually written as a fraction, eight over four. And what it means is that this piece is two inches thick or eight quarters of an inch thick. When you go to buy hardwood lumber in a rough sawn form, this is the way that the material will be labeled by the lumber retailer. To make my work pieces more manageable, I first cut them to rough length. I do this so I don't have to work with long 10 foot pieces of material while I'm joining and planing. With my pieces cut rough to length, I take them to the joiner and planer. I join one face to get it nice and flat and smooth, and I use that face as a reference to joint the edge to create a 90 degree angle on the workpiece. Once this is done, I take it to the planer and I plane the piece, the, the opposite face square and to final thickness. With three sides complete, I bring them to the table saw and rip the piece to width. To make all my ripping cuts at the table saw, I used an Infinity Thin Kerf Ripping Blade. This gives me a good balance between an aggressive ripping tooth geometry and a nice thin kerf, so I'm not trying to remove too much material. With all my pieces ripped to width, all that's left is to cut them to final length at the miter saw. I have all the pieces for my table space cut roughly to size. You can see I have my wide bottom feet, my vertical supports, my top caps that'll support the table top, and my cross stretcher which will run between the two legs for a nice sturdy base. Now it's time to get in and start doing the detail work to really make this an attractive table. The first step is to cut the tenons in the ends of my stretcher and both my uprights. To do this, I'm using an Infinity Datonator in my table saw, and I've set it to a quarter inch depth of cut, and I'm using the rip fence to establish a consistent length for my tenons. Now that I have all of my tenons cut on all my pieces, I'm ready to lay out my corresponding mortises. To do this, I'm gonna start with the bottom and top pieces of my trestle base, and I'm gonna take my ruler and find the center point of my foot. That's where the center of my mortise will be. With that, I will measure out and define the ends of my mortise, where those are gonna be, measuring from the center outward. Then to define the edges or the sides of my mortise, I'm going to take the tenon itself and set up my marking gauge. This is an eye gauging wheel type marking gauge and simply set the tenon points to be the exact thickness of my tenon. I'll come back to my foot and I'll set my fence to find the perfect center of the foot for my table. And I'll simply do that by setting it up, checking it, flipping it around, checking it again. Once I have it set right in the center, I'm going to mark off of one edge, mark both sides of my mortise. Then I'm going to turn my workpiece over because this is a through mortise. I'm going to mark following the same side that I marked the opposite side. So I'm always keeping the t marking gauge against the same edge just in case there's a slight variation off center, I'll keep that variation exactly in the same place. So when I cut my mortise, I'll have a nice vertical mortise for my tenon to fit into, and my table should come out nice and square. I've got all my mortises drilled out, and I'm going about chopping out the remainder of the waste. I'm just using some Narex bench chisels and my bench mallet to do my chopping. And as you can see, I've gotten one side or one leg of my table all chopped out. 
the top mortise, bottom mortise fitted, and the mortise for the cross stretcher done as well. So I'm halfway there. I'm gonna continue working on my legs. You can see I went ahead and drilled out all the waste at the drill press, and now it's just a matter of chopping to the lines that I laid out with my marking gauge and marking knife, and chiseling away that waste. I want to take just a second to point out that I'm paying attention to the grain orientation of my piece as I'm chopping. Because I've drilled out most of my waste, I'm actually going to be working across the grain in a long grain, splitting off a lot of this material. I want to be really cautious of the grain orientation of the piece. I'm first going to chop across the grain at either end of the mortise and really score that nice and deep. Then I'm going to start with the chisel, drop it in my knife line. I'll break off some of these little tips that are left from the drill bit, but I will start splitting this material away. I want to make sure that I start at the end that has the grain running into the mortise. If I started, you can see right here, the grain right here is running from outside the mortise to inside the mortise. If I were to start at this end, the grain is running from inside the mortise and then turning and coming outward. That runs the risk of splitting down this grain line. What I wanna do is start here, where the grain is outside the line and work into the grain so that the grain is falling into the mortise itself. You can see that line right there. That's my grain orientation. So as I split away this material, I'm gonna work from this corner up, come back, and work my way back down. Also, as I'm working, I'm going to be splitting away the material at the ends of the mortise first, working down one side and back up the other. However, I'm also gonna make sure that I'm in line with my workpiece. So you can see here, if I'm working here, I'm looking at my workpiece and I can see that my chisel is nice and square if I'm in line with it. If I work at 90 degrees to it, I can tell that it's square this way, which the chisel naturally does, but I can't see that it's square this way as easily. So I always, as I'm chopping, want to be looking down the edge of the chisel. Got all my mortises cut and my tenons fit, and now my table base is standing on its own two feet. Now that I'm happy with the way all my mortise and tenon joints are fitting together, I'm ready to add a slot so that I can wedge the tenons into their mortises when I do my final assembly. To lay this out, I'm simply gonna use my square and a ruler to mark a line a half of an inch in from the edge of my tenon top and bottom, and I'll use that same measurement on all my tenons, and then I'll use my square simply to mark that line out all the way down my tenon. Then I'm gonna take my square and pull my ruler on my square back a quarter of an inch from the face or the cheek of my tenon and mark across my line. This gives me a point that I can center off of with my quarter inch drill bit, and I'm gonna drill a hole all the way through my tenon. This is gonna be a nice little stress relief point at the very end of my wedge slot, so I'm not inclined to get stress cracks up my workpiece. Once I have the holes drilled, I'll drill those at the drill press to ensure a nice straight hole. I'll simply take my workpiece over to the bandsaw with just a standard Olsen quarter inch bandsaw blade and cut that slot for the wedge. I find that the bandsaw does a good job of giving me just a, the nice right thickness of slot for my wedge to fit in. My wedges, again, I'll make from offcuts from my slab so there'll be a nice contrast to my walnut base. I decided to cut the tapers on the feet of my table base to make those cuts at the bandsaw. I've got an infinity rip blade in my bandsaw, it's gonna give me a nice clean cut, and I'll be able to freehand this cut even in these wide three and a half inch pieces. With all my pieces cut at the bandsaw, I took them over to the belt sander. I used the belt sander to shape away any rough saw marks from the bandsaw, and also to finish up my cuts. I left my cuts at the bandsaw just a little bit proud to ensure that I had room to work and that I didn't overcut my lines.
I took my time at the bandsaw applying pressure and checking frequently to ensure that I got a nice flat bevel and that I got a nice consistent line up here near the mortise. This is the line I'm most concerned about because it's going to be close to the upright that fits into these feet. As long as that line is consistent with all the legs, I know that I'll have a nice good reveal. I want to have this be as sharp of a line as possible. I don't want it rounded over so that it creates a nice facet for my foot. The next step in preparing my piece for final assembly is to round over all the edges. To do this, I used an infinity eighth inch radius round over bit in my router table. This gives me a nice consistent and smooth round over for all my parts. The Infinity roundover bits all have a strong shear angle to the carbide cutters. This helps eliminate the possibility of tear out or chip out when we're rounding those edges so that we get a nice smooth result. I've got all my pieces sanded and I'm ready for final assembly. I'm going to be using some Tight Bond 2 wood glue and I've got my wedges here ready to go. Got my vertical portion of my leg here clamped in the vise, and I'm going to start with the bottom foot for my table. I'm going to add my glue to the tenon, slide the foot in place, put a little glue on my wedges, and drive them home. Just want a nice thin coat of glue. My tenons fit nicely in the mortises. Got my rag handy. I want to make sure that my foot slides down and beds nicely against the shoulders of my tenon. A little glue on my wedge. Get that one started. Got my second wedge started now. Grab my mallet. go. Try to be careful not to break the wedges. Just knead them tight and we're able to set this side away out of the way so we can work on the other. I just want to check and clean up any glue squeeze out. And we'll just keep working on the other leg. There we go. I'll set these aside, let them dry. Once they're dry, I'll trim the wedges and I'll install the top portion of my leg. And I'll continue to work through the table till I have all the joints glued up and finished. Now that my glue has dried, I'm ready to trim the ends of my wedges to be flush and then I can flip the piece over and glue in the other side of my leg. To trim my wedges, I'm just using a shark detail saw. It does great because it's flexible, cuts on the pole stroke, and I don't have to worry about scoring or scratching my work pieces. Now that I have my base fully assembled, I'm ready to install my feet. These are just little squares of offcut from my tabletop, and I just round it over the edges so that they'll match my base. One little detail I need to add to my table's base is to trim this top rail of the base to match 
the live edge of my top. On this portion of the tabletop, it's a little bit narrower than the rest, so this rail actually overhangs or sticks out beyond the edge of my table. I position the tabletop on the base where I wanted it, created the correct offset so that this will match, marked it with a pencil, and I'll trim it with a handsaw, and then sand it flush. I'm just finishing up my table and to fasten the top to the base, I made some shop made tabletop fasteners. These are just a small block of wood that has a rabbit in one end that fits into a slot in the base. I made the slot with a quarter inch slot cutter router bit in a handheld router and I made the blocks at the table saw to make the rabbit. I used an infinity quarter curve flat top blade to make my rabbit and then I simply cut them to length at the miter saw. I rounded my corners with an eighth inch radius to match the rest of my table and I used a center finder to find the center point of my block and then I drilled a pilot hole and I countersank the block to accept a brass screw that will hold the block in place. A quick way to locate the pilot hole for our screw in the tabletop is to use the brad point drill bit that we use to make the hole in the block. I just drop the drill bit into the hole in the block and use the brad point to locate the center of our hole for our screw. Here's our finished table. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. If you've enjoyed this video series, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss our latest videos. If you'd like to build a table like ours for yourself, be sure to check out our blog where you'll be able to find a 3D SketchUp model and measured drawings for this table. Also, check us out on Facebook and give us a like so you can stay up to date on what's going on here at Infinity.